In our lecture on uh, numerical methods, uh, today I like to do a small coding session and um, we discussed the Monte Carlo method and uh, somewhere in the middle there was this uh, little experiment described how you can use a Monte Carlo approximation to approximate uh, P. Okay, so you find uh, this uh, in the script. Uh, the thing is that four times the Monte Carlo integral of the indicator function on a two-dimensional random vector, yeah, so x and y, uniform on 0, 1, gives you an integral and this integral is actually equal to p. Yeah? So we can approximate p by calculating this uh, Monte Carlo integral. Okay, and the idea behind this was also in the script, just to review this, uh, if you sample random points in the unit hypercube, um, then the probability to be inside the, the circle uh, is the ratio of the area of the circle uh, with respect to the area of the unit hypercube, okay? And so then we do the transformation to just uh, the upper sector, yeah, the quarter from zero to one, and then we get four times um, uh, this uh, integral. Okay, this gives us uh, P. Okay, so, and then later in the script, uh, we had the remark that uh, Monte Carlo is a very good technique if you like to perform parallelization. So why is that? Okay, so there was the um, experiment here that we should use this algorithm of approximating P and parallelize it, say for example, to make use of multiple processor cores. So I would like to do a small excursion on parallelization, so teach you a little bit about this. And actually you will see that with some frameworks, some Java frameworks, it's actually very easy. It's just writing one additional word and you are done. Okay, so the point here is that the Monte Carlo method uses a sequence of IID, so it uses a sequence of independent, identically distributed random variables, and the important aspect here is the independent. So if the random variables are independent, actually this directly implies that the calculations we have to perform on these samples are independent. So each individual calculation can be performed independently. So we can very easily split the work into say smaller parts and then uh, distribute these smaller parts to their own processor core or like on the GPU to, to um, um, a GPU thread. Okay, so the idea is that we use a random sequence and we just split it into blocks. Yeah. So um, say we have blocks of size M. So then we have J times M plus I. From I from zero to M minus one. So each subsequence has M elements. And then we have K such subsequence such that K times M 
is the total number. So we have k subsequences j from zero to k minus one. Okay. And then we can perform a Monte Carlo integral on each of these uh, subsequences, calculate the sum, and then the total sum is just the sum of the um, individuals. Okay, so uh, to implement this uh, parallelization, actually sometimes there are frameworks that help us in splitting up uh, things. So actually we don't even have to do this uh, splitting. So um, how do we get these subsequences? So we have several options of generating such uh, subsequences. So first of all, if you get back to this slide, you see here that this sequence here starts at xj times m plus zero and ends at xj times m plus m minus one. So if we would like to do Monte Carlo, we would like to start all the subtask at the same time. So actually we like to have a sequence where we can cut out a subsequence and perform Monte Carlo on this subsequence. So if you have, for example, 1000 uh, Monte Carlo samples, so um, N is 1000, and you would like to have 10 subsequences, each with 100 Monte Carlo samples, uh, you would like to have a sequence that can start at X100, X200, X300, and so on. So in order to do this, a sequence where you can calculate the number at a certain index directly from that index has a certain advantage. Recall that for a linear concurrential generator, yeah, we generated the next point from the previous point. Okay, and so if we would like to start at X100, maybe we have to run from X0 to X99 uh, to actually get the starting point, which is a bit um, useless because it means that we have to generate all the random numbers um, in, in a sequence. So we cannot parallelize the general, uh, generation of the random numbers. So sometimes this is not an issue because the generation of the random numbers is fast. So you first generate all the random numbers and then you calculate your function f of x when you do the Monte Carlo integral. So sometimes you only parallelize the um, evaluation of the function, but you do not parallelize the generation of the um, random numbers. If you are, so I going from the bottom um, um, to the top, if you are in the special situation that your sequence calculates an element xi explicitly from the um, index, so like for example, in the Van der Korput and Horton sequence, so then you can very easily parallelize this because you just say start at a certain index. Um, if this is not possible, yeah, sometimes uh, there are certain random number generators that have some kind of uh, skip ahead um, possibility. So you can find a formula that generates element 100 from say element zero. 
Yeah, so you can find a formula that generates a larger step. So you first um, have to do uh, this uh, step. And if this is not possible, say for example, you have a pseudo random number generator, for example, like mass and twister, and you do not find a formula that allows you to do this skip ahead, uh, then there is a dirty trick you can do, yeah, but it's maybe not recommended. Uh, so if the sequence is generated from a seed, yeah, so there's some uh, initial value, then you can consider to generate different sequences with different random seeds. Yeah. So this works well, yeah, it's but it's maybe not an accurate solution because if you just consider that your sequence is uh, like that, okay, these are now your numbers you generated and your Monte Carlo seed of the sequence is here, this initial value, this is the seed, the starting point, and it's generating the next point from the previous point. And then you choose a randomly other seed, yeah, and here you generate now a different Monte Carlo sequence. Then it may happen by chance that actually your Monte Carlo seed is identically to some number that appeared early in the other sequence, which then means that actually the other sequence already contains these numbers. And you see that uh, the second sequence uh, only has three additional points. Yeah? So the gain in accuracy is a little bit lower, okay? Uh, but um, still this technique of using random seeds, different seeds uh, to generate a sequence. Yeah? So this is the seed. And it may happen that the seed appears in the other sequence. So it may happen that two sequences overlap. Um, overlap a lot. Okay, so um, these are some options on how we can parallelize. And now before I discuss something here on the coding, uh, let's do um, 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 a code session um, on this. Yeah? So today I like to do coding with you and I will use uh, two, um, uh, two APIs, two frameworks, the Java Stream API and the Executor framework. Okay, so let's go here and create a new experiment, a new class. So let's call this Monte Carlo integration experiment uh, or Monte Carlo integration parallel experiment. I would like to have a main method and I just implement some ways of parallelizing this uh, approximation of P um, here. Okay, so uh, first as a benchmark, maybe I would like to know the analytic value. So um, let's define this as a constant here. So this is our analytic value. Okay, and later I will try to compare this. Uh, um, oops, it has to go here. Compare our numerical solution with this. So the first one is to use um, a Halton sequence. And let's define the number of Monte Carlo samples. Uh, let's be a little bit bold. I would like to be uh, 20 uh, million, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is 10 to the power of seven. 
Well, let's use 10 to the power of eight, yeah? uh, 200 uh, million. So this is two times 10 to the power of eight. And with 20 to 200 million samples, I would like to approximate uh, P. So let's test with the Horton sequence. And I would like to test this with the Java stream API. And maybe first I do an example where we are not using the parallelization. So let's call this uh, sequential. Okay, I create dedicated methods to do this. Okay, so we have a little bit more uh, nicer overview in our code here. Okay, so um, approximation of P using Monte Carlo with the Horton sequence. So the Horton sequence, uh, we had it in our course before. Yeah? So here in random numbers, we had the Van der Korput sequence and the Horton sequence. So Horton sequence is just a Van der Korput sequence where each dimension has a different base. And the Van der Korput sequence was this algorithm here. Uh, that performed the uh, calculation of the Halton number or from the corporate number um, by from directly from the index. Okay. So we have a sequence of indices and we can directly calculate the number from the index. So I create a stream. So a stream is just a sequence yeah, in, uh, in this uh, framework. I create a stream of numbers from zero to number of samples. So if you look here, this first one is included. The last one is not included. So this is just zero to n minus one. Okay, then the stream, uh, I would like to apply a function that maps each index on a floating point double number. So I use here map to double and the argument should be a function that maps an integer, an integer to a floating point double number. Okay, so how do we calculate this floating point double number? So first we calculate our random vector. So we calculate X and Y. So X is two times the Halton number. So uh, Halton sequence dot, uh, let's uh, uh, import this. Let's use uh, Horton sequence from here. Ah, yeah. oh, there was an L missing. That was the reason why he cannot find it. Okay, and there's this function get Horton number for given base. And I pass the index I and then the base. So we use base two for the first dimension and we use base three for the second dimension. So a uh, Halton sequence is between zero and one. I subtract one half, then it's between minus one half and plus one half. I multiply with two, then it is between minus one and plus one. So multiply with two. Okay, so next number is the Halton sequence for base three. So we generate a two dimensional uh, Horton sequences with base two and three for the two dimensions. Next thing is that we have to check the indicator function. So we integrate from zero, uh, from minus one to one in both dimensions. And the next thing is that we have to calculate F, which is the indicator function. Are we in the unit circle or not? Yeah. So um, if um, X 
squared plus y squared is smaller than one, we are in the unit circle, so we return one, otherwise we return zero. Okay, so this maps the sequence of integers to a sequence of indicator function values, which we then just sum up. Okay, so this is now on our Monte Carlo sum. So we have to divide by the number of samples. So divide by the number of samples. And actually the integral is just, has been just transformed here two times. Yeah, so the, the new dx is two times the old dx. So we have to multiply by four. Okay, so that was our little uh, integration uh, problem. And let's print out uh, the result. So we are using here a sequential uh, and the Java stream RP. Uh, and what is the um, Error, the error is P Halton minus P analytic uh, is the error. Okay, so let's uh, try if this uh, works. So I run this little program. Okay, so now this takes a while. Uh, you see here processors are working a little bit, yeah but not too much, yeah, not, not everyone is here busy. Hmm, maybe I should have reduced here the number of samples. Okay, so we get a 10 to the minus six, yeah, and it took um, a few seconds. Uh, actually, since we like to do parallelization, I would like to know how long it takes. Uh, so, um, if we like to have a rough measure for time, uh, we can ask here the system for the current time in milliseconds before we do the calculation and after we do the calculation. Okay. And then we calculate the time in seconds as the time end minus the time start converted to a double divided by um, um, 1000. Okay, and we can print in addition here, maybe the time that it took to calculate this Monte Carlo integral. Okay, so maybe I reduce here a little bit the numbers to have the result a little bit faster. Okay, so you see this took here five seconds. Yeah? So if I go back to 20, yeah, it will take maybe 20 seconds uh, to calculate this. Okay, so where, while it's running, uh, let's do this now in parallel. Okay, so I just copy this code here. I rename this with stream, say parallel. And here on the top, I also call this other test, which performs the calculation in parallel. Okay, so now it's actually the same code. I haven't done the parallelization yet. So and I, I would like to show you how easy it is to parallelize this because you can tell the stream API that he should perform calculations in parallel. And actually you can also decide when he should do this. So um, here he is generating a stream of integer numbers. And I would like to tell him after you have generated this, 
everything that comes after this can be done in parallel. And you can do this by just adding here the word parallel. Okay, actually that's it. Yeah. So this code is now performing this calculation here in parallel. Okay, so um, let's print this using stream. So this is parallel. Oops. So let's check how long it takes if we perform it in parallel. So I run the program. Okay, and while it's running, uh, you see the reason why he can easily parallelize this is that the stuff which is inside here is completely independent. Yeah? So for every eye, he's doing something, but the other eye doesn't need to know what he's doing. Okay, so maybe I add a few more dots here. Yeah? So one, two, to have the output a bit nicer. And you see that uh, if you now look here in the lower left on the processors, the first run is currently running sequential. So it does not use up a lot of my processors. Actually, this uh, conference here takes, takes up, consumes up some time, and then it just consumes, say, in, in, in some one processor. It took 24 seconds. Now every processor is in use, you see, and it took five seconds. Okay, so we get um, a performance increase of say a factor of five, yeah? uh, roughly four point something. Reason is that uh, he does not have all eight processors uh, and there's maybe a small overhead in doing this parallelization. Okay, so um, there was a good question in the chat. Um, how does he know how to split up the stream? So how many numbers of compute task is he using? And this is actually a very good question. So um, he can check how many cores, how many parallel CPUs or how many CPUs uh, the machine has. And he uses um, as many worker threads as I have cores, okay? So, and then he is cutting the problem into smaller packages. But in this cutting, there is maybe an issue. Remember the code of the Halton sequence or the van der Korput sequence. If you look at the code of the van der Korput sequence, then you see that he is calculating the number from the index. And actually this algorithm takes longer for larger indices. Yeah. So if you now cut your sequence into smaller packages, it may happen that one package takes a lot longer than another package. Which means that, for example, if you have eight packages of work, and seven of them just need one second, but the last one needs 10 seconds, then in sum, if you do it sequentially, you have maybe 17 seconds, seven plus 10, but if you parallelize it, you have 10 seconds because it takes the time of the slowest package. Yeah? And you just have a factor of 1.7 performance in, in, increase in this example, which is a bit disappointing if you had eight cores. So the question how he is actually splitting this up is important. And this may be a reason to use another framework where you have more control on splitting this up. You can, of course, uh, use more threads which which uh, somehow also uh, will um, uh, increase this uh, parallelism. Yeah? Um, but I have another example where we need 
more control on how to split these uh, tasks. So actually internally he has some, some logic to split this up. Uh, I can send you maybe some, some reference where you can read about this. I would like to make another example. Uh, let's do the same with Mersen Twister. For Mersen Twister, uh, I do not have um, a skip ahead at hand. Yeah. Uh, so for example, I would like to do this technique of starting Mersen Twister with different seats, with different Monte Carlo seats. Yeah. But um, actually, I have a small question. Why not just use one Mersen twister for all the parallel calculations and everybody just picks from the sequence a number and performs the calculation? And then another one picks a number and performs the calculation. So actually, all the parallel calculations could share the same mere than twister. And this is actually okay for Monte Carlo because the order in which we um, actually sum these sequences up does not matter. Yeah? So actually this example here of splitting a sequence in these packages is just one possibility. We could also just have a sequence which has uh, index zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, and then we have index uh, eight, nine, ten, and the first thread takes index zero and eight, and so on. Yeah, sixteen, and the next one takes index one. Yeah, and even sometimes they skip one, and they just consume the whole sequence. That's a third possibility, which is actually uh, not on this slide. Yeah, just try. Um, and use a sequence in parallel. No? So maybe I write here one more alternative. Um, if the sequence allows this, we can make a single sequence generator. So use a single sequence generator from parallel threads. Okay, so in order to be able to do this, the generator has to be some kind, has to have some kind of property yeah, that allows this. This is sometimes called thread safety. So generator has to be thread safe. Okay, and this is a nice example, which I would like to show you next. Uh, so next example is uh, test this integration of P with the Mersenne twister. Okay, so uh, let's, um, yeah, write a new test here. Uh, let's call it test Mersen with stream. Maybe I also do first the sequential version. Okay. So the P Mersen, the approximation with the Mersen twister. Okay, I have some. Um, uh, generator, maybe I'd like to use here the same code as here above. Yeah? So with the integer stream, just to make it more similar, you can also directly generate a double stream yeah, with some uh, generator, but to make it more similar, um, let's just copy this code here. Uh, so you really see that it's a fair comparison because we are doing the same thing again. So let's uh, call this here P 
mehr als eine. And, okay, and I remove the parallel, so it is sequential. And here inside, I would like to create this random uh, number from a Mersen twister. And the Mersen twister implementation, which I would like to use is that of uh, Apache Commons math. Yeah, so there is um, a library that has uh, a Mersen twister implementation. So let me write this here explicitly so that you see which kind of implementation I use. Okay. And the argument here is some seed of the Mersenne twister. So let's use some number as an initial value of the generator. And we have here a random number generator. And you know that the Mersenne twister is a pseudo random number generator. So in order to generate a two dimensional sequence from a one dimensional sequence, we can make the trick to populate the random vector one by the other. Yeah? So the first element is here the random number from the sequence generator. And then we just pick another independent, so IID sample number for the second component. So very easy. This is the Mers and Twister implementation. Okay, you see here the index is actually I is not used. Yeah, So it's maybe a bit strange to use here this integer sequence and then transform it to the a double and never use the I. But, um, that's just to keep the example similar to the previous one. So this here is Mersenne, it is sequential, and it is using the stream API. Okay, so let's check uh, how this performs. So I have to do this test here. I call this test here with our 20 million, uh, 20, 200 million, 200 million sample points. Okay, so let's try. Um, so maybe I should cut out the first one because it is always taking 20 seconds. But again, you see now the first approximation is running sequentially. The uh, computer cores are not very busy. Yeah. Uh, he will print out the result. And after that, the second simulation run starts in parallel and the computer cores will become very busy now for a few seconds. Yeah? And he has the result after five seconds. Okay, now it's not busy. Yeah? The computer cores are not busy. We are in the example of Mersen. Okay, and it takes seven seconds. So maybe I move here a few points away. One, two, three, four. Okay. And um, you see that Merzen actually took seven seconds uh, without parallelization. Yeah? So it is a factor of three uh, faster than using the Halton sequence. And this difference will actually increase because the Halton sequence becomes slower and slower for higher indices. And also the Horton sequence is now two-dimensional. If you use a three-dimensional, the difference will also be even more prominent. Yeah? So you see now it is not parallel. Yeah? This is the Mersenne calculation currently running and it takes seven seconds. You also see here that the pseudo-random number generator is a bit... Um, less accurate. Yeah? So if you go back here, you see this is 10 to the minus six for Halton, 10 to the minus four for um, the Mersenne twister. Yeah? So if we go back here and I make a small remark here. So we perform this simulation with n equal to two times 10 to the eight, which means that Monte Carlo, yeah? So Monte Carlo is one divided by square root of n, uh, which is approximately 1.4 um, 
so one divided by 1.4, which is approximately 10 to the minus four, which is actually what we see uh, here, 10 to the minus four. So for pseudo random number generator, and for the Horton sequence, we had log n to the power of d divided by n. Uh, so, which is approximately 10 to the minus six for Horton. Okay, that's nice. Huh? So we see that actually the mathematical result is uh, coming out exactly from, from this. Uh, so you see there's a factor of 100 uh, between uh, the two uh, in accuracy, uh, but there's also some kind of uh, a factor of three uh, something in the performance. And this ratio uh, will change if you have uh, higher dimensional problems. And some at, at a certain level, Monte Carlo is uh, uh, with pseudo, pseudo random number generators this is better. Okay. but. Look that this is Mersenne without parallelization. So we can become even faster. So let's do Mersenne with a parallel stream. Okay. So I just do a new test here, call this parallel. I call this test here to perform the calculation. Okay, and I do this tiny little change that I call here, please perform all the calculations in parallel on your computer, on your threads, on your course. Okay, so let's run this uh, little problem. So in order to save a little bit time, yeah, we know by now that the sequential Halton takes about 20 seconds. Let's comment this out. So I only run the other examples. So he will start with parallel Halton. Okay, so he's getting fast. Okay, so parallel Halton and I get some kind of error. Okay, so that's strange. So where does this error come from? So it must come from our new part of code. Yeah? So let's comment all the others out and run again. So I run again. Uh, oops, I, 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 I made a mistake. I did the parallel here in the sequential and not here in the parallel. Okay, so here, here it should be. This is our code where we want to do the parallel because that was just the sequential. Okay. So if I now run this part of code here, test mersen stream with parallel, we get an error. So if I remove the word parallel, the error is gone. It's calculating the mersen sampling in sequential. Yeah? So six seconds, 10 to the minus four. If I add the word parallel, I get some strange error. So let's investigate this error. So you see there is some index out of bound exception here. A strange number, 624. Actually this number reminds us of the dimension in which Mersenne Twister is uh, uniformly distributed at most. Yeah? So the highest dimension we can, we can, we can use or we should use. Um, and uh, we get this index out of bound exception if we run in parallel. And this problem is due to the fact that actually the Mersenne and Twister uh, implementation is not threat safe. Yeah? So there is uh, an issue called uh, threat safety, uh, which is important. So if you have 
multiple threads, yeah, so multiple parallel um, worker threads, which access, say, a common variable, so some counter or the Monte Carlo seed or whatever, yeah, uh, and they access this variable in parallel, then this may lead to inconsistent states. For example, you have, say, some variable where you count something, uh, one thread is counting up, then the thread is ex assuming that this variable is um, one uh, larger than the previous value. He's performing some calculations which use this variable, but then another parallel thread is also counting up. Yeah? So then it may happen that the first part of the first thread has used N or, or I plus one, and the second part uses I plus two, but he, or he assumed that nobody had changed this variable. So there are some basic rules how you can avoid this, but before we discuss this, I would like to actually show you uh, what has happened here. Yeah? So you see there's this index out of bound exception here in the implementation of the Apache common math math and twister. And he tells us that this is in math and twister in line 200. 52. If I click this, he will jump to the code where this happens. Okay, so this is ugly code that performs the Mersenne Twister calculation. Okay, and you see that um, there is some kind of array, this array MT here, um, which generates the next value. And actually, Mersenne Twister works in the following way that he will generate 624 values. In a, in a single block. Yeah? So he's not gen generating one random number from the previous one. He's generating 624 random numbers from the previous 624 random numbers. So actually it's like a linear concurrential random number generator with a very big number. Okay, so he's storing these 624 numbers in this array. So whenever you ask him, he's checking um, is your current index larger than this number? So if you hover here over this number, you see that this is 624. Yeah? So if this uh, number is uh, actually larger or equal, so the, he's beyond uh, the 624 numbers, yes, then he will generate the new numbers. And at the end, he sets the index to zero. Yeah? And you can ask for the next numbers. So if you are below this number, you will just get the next number. Okay, and now you immediately see maybe what happened here. We have parallel threads in parallel asking for the next number. Okay, so the first thread was here yeah, and the number um, was maybe smaller than uh, the n. Yeah. So he was not asking for the next one. So the next thread was here and the number was also smaller than the N. So he does not generate a new one and he would like to ask for the next one. So now assume that your index is 623 and two threads walk along this in parallel. So they will skip this part here and there are two threads asking for this number, yeah? but there's only one number left. Yeah? So the next thread is actually seeing here the increment from the previous thread, and he's requesting a number which did not exist. So to avoid this problem, you have to actually allow only one thread to enter this piece of code here. Okay, so this can be done with a word called synchronize. So this is maybe the most brutal way of fixing this uh, issue. So uh, you can uh, synchronize the access to a thread, uh, the exit access to, to a variable uh, by using the word uh, synchronized. So this is that only one thread is allowed to um, 
actually perform this modification. And then when it's done, the other thread is allowed to uh, uh, enter this code. So if the threads need to modify a common shared field or object, so in our case, this is the counter uh, inside um, the um, uh, Mersen twister, then the access has to be uh, synchronized. Uh, there are other tips how you can avoid such problems. For example, a good thing is that to use only read only access if possible. Yeah. Then if you do not modify a variable, it should, if you just read it, this problem uh, does not occur. Or if you have some kind of counter uh, and it is possible that every thread has its individual counter. So the um, variable exists in every thread uh, uh, on its own. So say, this, this is sometimes called that the variable is thread local, yeah? then this problem also does not um, occur because every thread has its own counter and they do not interfere. I will show you uh, the two solutions of introducing a thread local and um, of synchronization. Let's try it with synchronization. Okay, so Maybe I'm a bit pupute and I add here a synchronized around this block. So this means that actually only one thread is allowed to enter this block here. Uh, this solution is actually a bit stupid, but I just want to show you uh, that it works. So we have a parallel execution but I do not allow that this critical part here is calculated by um, uh, two threads simultaneously because inside the Mersenne here, next double, no? so there is this function next called and uh, two threads uh, modify the counter at the same time, uh, not checking that we are very close to the bound yeah, because we have already passed this point here and which then um, results that one thread is beyond the size of, the, of this uh, array. Okay, so if I now run this um, experiment, yeah, so maybe I can also enable all the others here. So we, maybe not all, uh, the 22nd uh, Halton, sequence, sequential can be maybe skipped, but the other ones are maybe fast enough. So we have Halton in parallel with 5.7 second, uh, 5 seconds. We have Mersenne with seven seconds, 10 to the minus four using sequential. And now comes the parallel. And what you see here that is the processors are a little bit more busy but actually he's not using up all the processors. And the reason is that actually this word here blocks the parallelism because this block here can be only entered by one thread uh, at a time. And you see that now the time is almost as worse as the sequential Halton. Yeah? Uh, it's not only that we blocked the uh, parallelism, so we have became sequential, it's that we have now so much overhead in parallelizing and then we are removing the parallelism that it ex is actually slower. So maybe you say that we only need to block the generation of the random numbers. So let's block only the generation of the random numbers and the rest of the calculation can be performed in parallel, which would look like this. Yeah, so uh, you have a random vector. Uh, the generation of the random vector is not allowed to be parallel, okay? Um, but um, each, um, uh, but, but the calculation then, if we are inside the unit cube, uh, is uh, allowed to be parallel. So in our example, this doesn't cure a lot because actually the calculation of are we inside the unit cube or not is so fast that it does not matter. In other problems, this is maybe a good solution. 
yeah, to have um, um, a synchronized uh, around the generation of the random numbers. But still, it is here not a very good solution because it takes much longer yeah, than actually the sequential version. This the sequential version is five seconds. Here it is still 19, se 19 seconds. Uh, so maybe next uh, idea is just to synchronize each individual S access, yeah, which would be like this. Okay, does this help? So I synchronized the access to the Mersenne twister, yeah, but uh, okay, I can, I can tell you it does not help. Okay, so you see that actually with this implementation of Mersenne uh, using the stream API, um, it's very difficult to perform a parallelization. Uh, I wouldn't say it is impossible with the stream API. The following trick can be also done with the stream API. Uh, but I would like to show you uh, now an alternative where I perform a parallel um, um, execution. Actually, there should be parallel here. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, let's go to the cleaner version of the code here where the synchronize was around this. Yeah, it looks like a bit, a bit nicer. Um, okay, so I would like to show you an alternative uh, framework. Yeah. So here on our list, there was the Java Stream API. So it is very easy to parallelize uh, with uh, a stream, parallelize a stream by just adding the word parallel, but the code inside uh, has to be independent of each other and has to be thread safe. Yeah? Okay, so the next thing is an exec the executor framework and uh, Java futures. So let's write this. So I would like to test Mersen with the so-called executor framework for a given number of samples. Okay, so um, in the executor framework, you can uh, get something which is called the executor and you can submit task to the executor and the executor is performing all the task in parallel. Okay, so I would like to split now the number of tasks by hand. So let's define some number of tasks. So let's say I have 100 tasks. I would like to split my samples in um, 100 packages. So I have some number of samples per task. So the number of samples per task is just the number of samples divided by the number of tasks. Actually, at this point, you have to be a bit uh, careful yeah, that this integer division has no remainder. Otherwise, you have to increase one package by this uh, size of the remainder or have a specific package. But in our case, uh, I don't care about this uh, now because I know the integer division is, uh, is, is, is fine. So um, there is something called an executor service. And um, there are different such um, executors. Sorry, executors. Uh, why, why is he not liking my my S? Ah, okay. I, I I need executors. I don't know. Maybe I write it by hand. Oh no, now it works. Okay. So there are different. Um, uh, such ex executors, and there's for example here the fixed thread pool executors. Yeah. And you can specify how many parallel workers, how many parallel threads uh, you use for this calculation. Yeah. So let's have here some number of threads. And um, how many threads would I like to use? Uh, maybe a good uh, value uh, as guidance is the number of processors. 
just use as many parallel workers as you have processors. Uh, you can ask uh, for the number of um, processors by using runtime, get runtime available processors. So this is our value of the number of threads. So now you can submit a working task to this um, executor. So what do I like to do as a task? I would like to calculate um, the um, approximation of P uh, with a Mersenne twister, but each Mersenne twister for the task should use a different seat. So actually on our list, I used the first um, trick, which was on our list, uh, use sequences with different seed. Wasn't recommended, but it is here maybe a way uh, to parallelize the pseudo random number generator. So for this, let's write um, a small function. Um, get approximation of P with mesen, uh, which uses a given seed and uh, uses a number of samples. Okay. And uh, then I submit this function with different seeds to the parallel threads. So let's first generate the Mersenne twister. So let's use this non-thread safe uh, implementation from Apache Common Math. And let's use this seed, which is here our argument, as the seed of this um, random number generator. Okay, so now we have um, this uh, random number generator. Let's calculate P uh, from this. Maybe I just copy the code which we had here. Yeah, so it is just fair. Yeah. Okay, I generate an in stream with number of samples, not parallel map to double and I do not need to synchronize here because every thread has its own local version of the Mersen, so they are independent. Okay, and I return this number. Okay, so now I have here a sequential calculation of the Mersen. Okay, Maybe also you, you, you can uh, do the traditional one without the stream, if you like to see the code uh, without the stream. Uh, you would write here Monte Carlo sum. Then you have an integer loop. Okay. Or instead of sum, I can just count number of uh, samples in unit circle. Okay, then you have an integer loop which generates the random number and counts the number of uh, so this starts here at zero, sorry, this starts at zero and counts up if we are inside the unit circle. This would be the version without stream. And the value which we return is four times the number of samples in the unit circle divided by the number of total samples. Okay, so uh, either way works, yeah. So this is now the approximation of 
P using a Mersenne twister, pseudo random number generator with a given seat. So now I continue here and I would like to have different um, such jobs with different seats. So actually I use a random number generator to generate the seat. This random number generator needs also some Monte Carlo seat, some seat. And uh, I use the Java random uh, for this. Okay. So, and now let's submit to the executor our job. So you write executor.submit. And then you can just submit um, some uh, task, yeah? So um, this task takes no argument, but returns um, a value, okay? So the value is the value of P, uh, approximated. So let's get the seat here. Uh, long seed is random seed dot next long. Okay, so now it works. And for this seed, I would like to submit now a task. Okay, the task is just a function with no argument. So you do this bracket open, bracket close. And it returns a value, namely it returns the approximation of P with methane using this seed. And here it uses number of samples per task. Okay, uh, this submits one such task to the executor. So actually we would like to submit many tasks. So how many tasks would we like to submit? Number of task is the number and I create a loop around this, which submits many different tasks to the executor. So now the executor uh, takes these tasks and works on parallel. Okay, so you see this, doing this parallelism by hand without the stream is a little bit more work, yeah? but actually we have much more control uh, because we can explicitly specify how many tasks he should use. And you can also specify how the task should be split. Uh, this is an uh, advantage. Okay, so where do we get the result? Okay, the result is actually coming back here. So I need some list of results uh, um, where I collect all my results. Okay, so the result from this function is a double. Okay, but actually this cannot work because if I would like write this line, he would have to wait for the executor to finish to get the result. So I cannot get the result immediately, but I can get something which gets me the result in the future. So I get a handle to it, and later I can ask for the result. And actually this object which I get is called a future. So a future is a value which you will get at a future point in time. Yeah? So you get a handle on this value and you can specify what kind of future it is. It is a future value uh, being a double. Okay, so this is what this executor returns. And I create here now a list of such future values, which are in the future uh, a double. Okay, and let's put this result here in this list. Okay, so this is here the first step distribute the worker task. So we distribute all the task. 
So now all the tasks run in parallel and we can ask for the results. So the next step is collect the results. So we call collect the results in a sum. So we do a loop over all tasks again. No? And collect the results. So this is sum is sum plus result results. I would like to have the result corresponding to the first, second, third, and so on task. This object here is the so-called future. And from this future, I can now get the double value. Okay. And here an exception can happen. Yeah. So I have to declare that an exception can happen if the thread was interrupted. Okay, but let's don't care about this. So then our approximation is a sum of different P approximations and we just take the average of this. So this is sum divided by, actually now divided by the number of tasks. So I take the average of say 100 approximations each approximation being the average of uh, 2 million simulations. Okay, so that was a little bit lengthy, but it's now um, an example of calculating this approximation in parallel using the executor. Okay, let's also calculate the time. Yeah, so the time in seconds is the start time, uh, the end time minus the start time. So let's calculate here time end is the current time in milliseconds and also time start before we do all this stuff here is the current time in milliseconds. No? So let's do it here. So we can measure the time, how long this takes. So I hope I wrote everything um, correctly. Uh, maybe again, uh, the code is not so long. Yeah? It's just these lines and it has two parts. First, we distribute all the calculations. Second, we collect all the results. These calls here run asynchronously in parallel. So I can submit more task and again, and he's just collecting the task and working on it. This call here is synchronizing. So this call is waiting for the task to finish. But at this point, we can wait for the first task to finish because all the other tasks are already running. Uh, and it also does not matter if the second task ends before the first task before, uh, or, uh, bef because um, he will then wait for the first task and then he immediately jumps to the second one and sees the result is already there. Yeah? So this loops here waits as long as the slowest task, which is what we need because we need all the values. So let's uh, add our last test here. Uh, test Mersen with executor to our list and let's keep uh, fingers crossed and run this program. So now we do a test of the Halton sequence approximation of P in sequential, in parallel, using the Java, Java Stream API. We do this same with a pseudo random number generator uh, with Mersen Twister, sequential and parallel and then we use the executor framework. You see the first sequential one did not use all the processors. Now we are going in parallel. We were faster, we're using all the processors. Now we are going sequential. We are not using all the processors, but Mersenne was quite fast. Now we have this buggy implementation 
of using the stream, stream API where we synchronize inside and we lose all the performance. Okay, and the last one is Mersen with Executor. So now uh, we should maybe use all processors and it is very fast. Okay, it's actually the fastest one, 1 1.6 seconds, yeah. Okay, so this one is even faster than um, the Halton parallelization, yeah. Uh, so you see again, the factor of four or five between Mersenne and um, Halton. Yeah, so Mersenne is factor three or four faster. And now the fastest thing we have is the parallel mesen. Um, you see that the result here is different from this result here. Why is that? Okay, so maybe I add here one, two more digits, two, two more dots to be a bit nicer. Okay, so why is the result of uh, Mersenne using the executor framework different from the um, stream API? Yeah. The reason is that we are using completely different sequences. So here we used one sequence with a, a single seed. Okay, here we are using many different sequences with different seeds. The seeds are generated from another sequence, but actually the Mersen sequences have different Monte Carlo seeds. So they are completely different sequences. And uh, you see, I believe the result was seven times 10 to the minus five. So actually this sequence was by chance a little bit better, but you know that Monte Carlo is actually just in probability. Oh no, it's, it's a little bit worse. I see it's a little bit worse. Okay, so it was by chance a little bit worse. You can use a different uh, number here, yeah? And maybe you get another uh, number. Um, you can also uh, use the executor framework to parallelize um, the Horton sequence. And maybe I like to do this because it's just copy and paste. It's not so much work. Yeah. So get approximation of P with Mersenne. I copy this, get approximation of P with Halton. And now I do not want to split using the seed. I want to split using the start index of the sequence, the start index of the sequence. So this loop here goes from start index to start index plus number of samples. And inside it uses a Halton sequence. So I can get rid of this mess then here. And inside I use a Halton sequence. So Halton sequence dot get Halton number for given base. I and two for the first component and I and three for the second component. Okay, so now I have an approximation of P using the Horton sequence with a different start index. And I would like to now, now create, as we did here with the Mersenne, different batches yeah, using the Horton sequence. Okay, so I copy this here, test Halton. And this is my last test now, Halton with executor. So I would like to run this test also here. Test Halton, Halton with executor. Maybe we, maybe we move it here. So we have Halton and Mersenne tests. Okay. And I need to modify this code here. So in this code, we have here 100 different tasks. Um, we create the executor service. This was needed to generate random seeds. Yeah, this is not needed because we do not uh, use the get approximation with Mersenne. We use the get approximation with 
Halton for a given start index. So, and what is the start index? The start index is just which task am I working on? Multiplied with number of samples per task. Yeah? So the first task goes from zero to um, two million minus one. And the next one goes from two million to four million minus one and so on. Yeah? Okay, so you see this will be for the first one, two million, but the two million is not included in the loop yeah, because we start in zero. Okay, so I have created now a parallelization using the executor framework with the Horton um, sequence. And let's run this um, experiment. Okay, so unfortunately running all the guys takes so long. Yeah, we have 20 seconds uh, for the first one. You see processors are not used uh, up. Yeah, it's uh, sequential. Um, so I hope I did everything right. Then what's the next one? The next one is the parallel Halton, uh, which gives us the same number, much faster. The next one is Halton with executor, which gives us the same number almost. There's a small difference. Maybe you can think about where the difference comes from. And it is faster. It's actually one second faster, which is 20% uh, uh, here uh, faster, yeah, almost 20%. Um, then comes Merzen in sequential order, which is similar to the parallel. Yeah? Uh, the parallel Merzen using stream was buggy, was slow. Yeah? And we have here the um, very fast Merzen with the executor framework. Okay. There is a surprising thing. Parallelization using the executor is faster than using the stream. And the reason here is that actually very much related to the question which we had in the chat, which we had from you. How does he know how to split the task? So actually he doesn't know a lot of our problem. So he uses some reasonable splitting. But the Halton sequence has the unpleasant effect that later blocks take longer than earlier blocks. So actually we should split it up into many small blocks, but I still would like to use eight threads because if I use more threads, he will switch the threads between the processors, which takes time. Actually, I would like to use one thread per processor and every thread works on some task. And the task should be small enough such that he can distribute it more evenly. So if you just have here, um, actually the example is here, eight blocks, he has a very large number of blocks and one block is much slower than the other one and the calculation takes as long as the slowest block. If you have two small blocks, it may be that the overhead to schedule the task uh, is too large. So here in this executor framework, you have much more control about the size of this block and you can choose a number which gives you then an even faster uh, calculation. Yeah? So if I have here an eight, um, it's uh, maybe worse. So let's, uh, let's stop the calculation and just uh, uh, remove this first one because it takes so long. Okay, so halt and parallel using stream. Uh, so now the difference is a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's only, uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, one second, it's a little bit smaller yeah, because we use the small number of blocks. To summarize, I let it run all together. And we have seen many aspects uh, in this uh, little experiment. Yeah, for example, you've seen that you cannot parallelize uh, every code because it is not thread safe. If you have code which is not thread safe, uh, you need to synchronize things. Uh, but if you use the stream API and just synchronize the whole block, you 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 uh, lose all the advantages. Okay, this is maybe trivial, but maybe you should have seen it once. And um, if you like to have finer control on 
splitting the um, worker task, then you can do this with this executor framework. I will commit this code to our repo. So you can use it maybe as a blueprint for your um, examples. Um, or when you, when you like to do something in parallel, either use the stream API or just use the um, executor version. And you see that um, in this two dimension, Halton is actually still better, yeah? It takes here uh, a little bit longer, but it is a factor of 100 better. But in higher dimension, this difference is shrinking and having a fast pseudorandom number generator parallelized uh, is maybe then still the best uh, way to go. Okay, so actually this was a quite exhaustive code session, yeah? Um, and maybe there were many details uh, inside, yeah, that you do not need for the theory, for the next uh, uh, sections on, on, on theoretical sections. But uh, I believe it's maybe nice to have seen this at least uh, once. And uh, you have also seen that the code, you need to parallelize something using the stream API, or using the executor API uh, is not so long. Yeah? So executor is a little bit longer. You define your executor, you distribute your task, you collect the result. Yeah? So maybe it's a bit longer, but still uh, fits on one page. Okay, so thanks for today. Yeah? So you have seen already the script. We will continue with uh, generation of random numbers with other distributions. So, uh, so far we have just looked at uniform uh, distributed random numbers. So next session will be on uh, random number sequences, which have other distributions like normal distribution, exponential distribution, and so on. For this, we need to prove some some small results and uh, have the nice applications in mathematical finance.